This is the Red Podcast. This is episode number 108. We're talking about how you can steal like an artist. Is it ethical? Of course it is. That's coming up on this episode. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. I was in yoga class earlier today. I've been doing yoga for 17 years. Quite a long time. That's a long time. We're in downward dog. If you go to a yoga class, the very first class that you go to, you're going to do downward dog. If you've done yoga, you know this pose. The teacher stops the class. She says, let me demonstrate something. I said, uh-oh, here it comes. She said, David, this is your pose right here. And she does the pose wrong. Oh. And here's what she said. This is why I bring it up. The more competent you become at something, the more comfortable you become at something, you have a tendency just to kind of rest, to relax, to think it's all going to take care of itself. She was talking about teaching her 16-year-old daughter to drive. And she said, right now is not the time that I'm worried about her crashing because she's so conscientious. She's white-knuckling everything. She's paying attention to everything. It's going to be when she gets competent, when she gets relaxed, that's when the accidents happen. So the teacher stopped the whole class to point out what you were doing wrong? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that happens all the time. It wasn't like it was... I'm not going to that class. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Well, yoga, you don't get it right. You can work the same pose for years. Like I said, 17 years in, you're still working those foundational poses. And that's why... I bring up this conversation. Here we are, entrepreneurs. We've got entrepreneurs listening. It's always going back to the fundamentals. And that's the reason why, because we get comfortable at them. We forget them. We think that they're going to take care of themselves. And they don't. You get lazy. You develop bad habits. Speaking of driving, you know when countries change the side of the road that you drive on, say from right to left, accidents go down. That's the exact reason why. Hmm. Why would a country change what side the cars drive on? I don't know. (laughs) Just in case they do. In case (laughs) England decides, okay, we're going to follow America's lead and we're going to change our side of the road, then accidents would go down. Accidents will go down for a short time. Then as people get comfortable, they go right back up. So you would think that countries would do that maybe every year. Yeah, just flip Flip things back and forth. Sure. That's a great idea. Great idea. We're full of those here at Red Podcast. It takes a lot of paint. This is Red Podcast. Red stands for Real Entrepreneur Development. We help you build an audience, sell more products, and make more money. We're business optimizers. We're going to show you how to be more efficient in your marketing and find the hidden money sitting right in front of you, sometimes on the yoga mat. There's a great book. It's called Steal Like an Artist, Austin Cleon. Is that how you say his last name, Cleon? I don't know. That's how it's spelled. K-L-E-O-N. We'll roll with it. It's a cool book, and it's a quick read. He is an artist. That helps to write a book. <laughs> that helps. It's got a lot of pictures. <laughs> stealing like an artist. It has artist. a lot of diagrams. And it was a New York Times bestseller for a while there, so other people liked it as well. Absolutely. I want to talk about some of the big ideas from this book. You've been through it. I've been through it. And there are a lot of big ideas that I feel are helpful to entrepreneurs. And some of these, like that foundational yoga pose, we know, but we've skipped over haven't thought about. Others could be those aha moments that make everything fit into place for you. Well, a lot of times, like you're talking about, David, when you've been in the game for a long time, you feel like you know everything about business or things are going smoothly for you. That's when it helps to read these types of books, remind yourself of these things. That's when it helps to get a coach, to get a mentor, to get people who are outside of you, like your yoga teacher, who can point out, hey, David, you're not doing this as you should be doing it. You're too relaxed or whatever. So, Thinking about that, looking outside yourself to figure out how to be the best version of you. It's very tough to know what your inside looks like from the outside. And to flip that, remember how we were flipping stuff on the last episode? Oh, yeah. It's very tough to know from the outside what's going on on the inside. There it is. Deep thought. You're a genius. So here's what Austin says, how to look at the world like an artist. He says nothing is original. You agree with that? I think so. There's this great quote from Stephen Fry. Do you know Stephen Fry? I do. Comedian. He says, an original idea 
that can't be too hard. The library must be full of them. <laughs> but that kind of reiterates Austin's point is that nothing is original. We're all stealing from ideas from somebody else. He says every new idea is a mashup or remix of one or more previous ideas. Building a better mousetrap, still a mousetrap. I think the problem becomes when it's like the blind leading the blind. I think you have to look at other people's ideas and build upon them. There's nothing really original, but you don't just want to follow somebody blindly and do what they do just because they're doing it. The artist is a collector, not a hoarder. I like this one because I've seen people, especially online, if you go on Facebook or Twitter where people are sharing links right and left, People are more or less hoarding information. I don't know if they're actually reading all these things they're sharing because there wouldn't be enough time to do that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it is important to look at what other people are doing. It is important to have content coming in. I always say input equals output. So I think it's important to read, to listen to podcasts like this. At the same time, don't hoard information. What are you doing with that information? Why do you need it? Why are you listening to something? Why are you reading something? How else can we apply that to entrepreneurs? Or entrepreneurs are collectors, not hoarders. How can we, what are some other ideas there? What I think that he's saying here is that you use whatever it is that you've got. If you've got a great idea for a business, you're jumping in there, you're testing it out, you're seeing if it works, you're actually having it happen. It's not like one of these people that is like, oh, I've got a thousand ideas for a business, but hasn't acted on any of them. Mm -hmm. Sitting on something, not making use of it. We think about this all the time in our lives, Laurel. We've got a house. We use every bit of space in this house. It's one of those things that you see a lot if you go to a McMansion or something out in the burbs. Couple, maybe one or two kids, but they've got five or six bedrooms. Nobody's ever using that. It's ridiculous. Why would you do that? And people do the same thing with their ideas. People do the same thing with their knowledge. If you're going to consume it, use it. Otherwise, it's just taking up energy. You've got to clean that room. Got to hold those ideas, memorize them, think about them. I like that Austin says, save your thefts for later. What do you think about that? <laughs> I love that because I'm always carrying a pen in my pocket. When I see a good idea, write something down. Except it's always on the back of a receipt that you never find. You got to get better about your notebook carrying around. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoarding, right? The problem is you don't have a man bag to keep a notebook in. But I think that's the, the real problem here. I've got a little bitty book. It's called a field book. I've got a miniature moleskin. And when I say miniature, I think it's about three inches by two inches. So they do make little tiny books that will fit in your pocket, which is where my key ring with the pin is. It would totally do that. Yeah, it's good to organize that stuff. I see a lot of people, speaking of hoarding, now that we've got Evernote, they'll press a button, collect an idea, write something, send it to Evernote. Give a voice memo, send it to Evernote. What's happening with those ideas? The toughest part of writing a book is organizing those ideas. I think if you take one thing away from this podcast, don't hoard, collect, use stuff. When I think about collectors, I think about the china cabinet, that nice china that people never use. I think if you're going to have something in your house or in your brain or in your business, use it. And if it breaks, if it gets dirty, get another one. But do you ever go back and look at your notebook full of ideas that you've written down over the year, past couple of years, and you're like, oh, man, that was a great idea. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That was good. I can't believe I wrote that down. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. And I also <laughs> yeah. look at ideas and I wonder, what was that about? So what I've started doing, I write a lot of stuff on little post-it notes. I've got a memo cube that I use, about three inches by three inches, little square notes. Similar to a post-it note, but they don't have the sticky stuff on the back. I've got to write down what the idea is about. Otherwise, I forget. I think, oh, those are great ideas, but what was it for? Mm -hmm. I have to say, though, post-it notes are a terrible task idea management system. Just for those of you listening out there, get a notebook. <laughs> <laughs> you want it bound in some way. I think the thing about <laughs> post-it notes is you can have an entire wall full of them very, very quickly. Yep, and they're all over your office now. So get a management system for your ideas and don't hoard them. Austin says this, don't wait until you know who you are to get started. And I love that because I think to find out who you are, you've got to jump in. That's where the real learning occurs. 
You do. I mean, look at actors out there. Some of these big actors, they didn't figure out what their style was, what type of movies they wanted to be into. They just started acting. They didn't try to find themselves deep down and communicate their vision. They just dove in and got started. I was watching a really bad movie on Netflix the other day. It was called Mystic Pizza. Are you aware of this? I am from back in the 80s. Oh, gosh, it's so bad. But I was having an 80s night and I was watching this movie with Julia Roberts. And in a two second clip, there's Matt Damon in one of these scenes that Julia Roberts is in. And he has maybe one line. And I'm like, is that Matt Damon? I had to go back and pause it. And then I looked him up on IMDb. And that was his very first role in a movie back in the 80s. And now he's a megastar. So you really do have to get started where you are now and figure it out as you go. You have to jump in. Nowhere is that more apparent than me than when I write a book. There's the book that I think that I'm going to write. And then there's the book that emerges from when I'm writing. I'm in the middle of one now, and even knowing this, it's really, really scary because you want to have it all laid out, that beginning, middle, and end, know how it's going to end. But sometimes you don't. This podcast, another great example of it, if you listen to the early episodes, which you can do at redpodcast.com, and this is us coming in with experience already. You've done podcasting, I've done mm-hmm. broadcasting and podcasting. It still has changed from the beginning when we started. It emerges, but it wouldn't have happened had we not jumped in and tried. And that kind of leads me to the next thing that Austin is saying in his book, which is similar, which is write the book that you want to read. That's really important. He says this. He says, write what you like, not write what you know. And I think that's important. I think it comes down to being your audience. If you are your audience, if you really understand who they are because you're one of them, that book's going to sell. And also you're going to be very engaged while you're writing it. So it's going to be good for you. The writing is going to be better. You're going to put more into it. And you're going to be able to market it better if you write the book that you like, that you want to read, that you're interested in. People are going to be magnetized towards you and towards your writing if you take that approach as opposed to just writing what you know. Same if you start a blog or start a podcast or something along those lines. Same rule applies. Speaking of being experiential, he says this, use your hands, step away from the screen. And I love that. So many people are living their lives online. Now that we have portability with our screens, people are living their lives online even when they're away from their computer. I don't understand. What does that mean, step away from the screen? I I don't comprehend that. I'm a millennial. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Uh-huh. We got a jokester in here. That's a joke. I was out yesterday at lunch with some friends, and I saw a group of four or five millennials come in. They were all on their screen walking. And I'm telling you, I think that this walking while texting. It's dangerous. And completely dangerous. It's also annoying to a guy like me. I was at a Mexican place. I had like three things of salsa in one hand and a burrito in the other, and I'm having to bob and weave just to make sure I don't spill it all over them. But some people live their lives like that. That's not being present. And you're missing out on all sorts of great stuff going on around you because you're worried about checking your Facebook status or something. See, they're using their hands, definitely their thumbs. They're just not stepping away from the screen. So (laughs) you have to do both. Use your hands, step away from the screen. This was something that I really enjoyed doing when I was working on my Kickstarter project. I really had a lot of off-screen time where I was creating things and filling things and building things. And that was an exciting time for me. And I'm thinking about how to incorporate that into my life more, whether it's through business or whether it's through a hobby or something like that. But I think we all need to get back into creating things that aren't just on the computer. There's something really cool about that. When we moved into the current house that we live in, I was doing the lawn myself. Now, we could have hired it out. We actually hire it out now because I'm just so busy. I wasn't getting out there to do it. But there was something really cool about getting out there and becoming part of this thing, working with it with my hands, that affects how I feel about the house when I come up to it, affects how I think about the house when I walk outside. There's something cool in creating. And it's not always on a screen. 
Another thing that Austin says is side pro- 